Welcome to The Reality Revolution. I'm your host, Brian Scott. Today, we're going to return to the amazing world of Prentice Mulford. We've now had two episodes on my channel with Prentice Mulford. We've discussed spells and the law of change and the idea of thought currents. Today, we're going to talk about the art of forgetting. Forgetting is an important part of reality creation. Perhaps in many ways, forgetting is the same as forgiveness. When you understand the power of thought, then you understand the importance of forgetting. Forgetting is powerful and it's built into the fabric of our existence. When we are reborn, we forget our past lives. Could you imagine if you were forced to remember all of the sins and terrible things that you've done in all your past lives? It would be debilitating. You look at what soldiers go through when they experience post-traumatic stress disorder and your thoughts and memories are constantly affecting you. So there is this power that you can have when you learn how to forget. And there is an art to forgetting, which was talked about hundreds of years ago by the amazing author Prentice Mulford. And I want to discuss it a little more in his chapter, The Art of Forgetting, in his book, The God in You, which is one of his best books. The Art of Forgetting by Prentice Mulford. In the chemistry of the future, thought will be recognized as substance, even as the acids, oxides, and all other chemicals of today. There is no chasm betwixt what we call the material and spiritual. Both are of substance or element. They blend imperceptibly into each other. In reality, the material is only a visible form of the finer elements which we call spiritual. Our unseen and unspoken thought is ever flowing from us, an element and force real as the stream of water which we can see, or the current of electricity which we cannot see. It blends with the thoughts of others, and out of such combination new qualities of thought are formed, as in the mixture of chemicals there are formed new substances. If you send from you, in thought, the elements of worry, fret, hatred, or grief, you're putting in action forces that are injurious to your mind and body. The power to forget implies the power of driving the unpleasant and hurtful thought or element and bringing in its place the profitable element to build up instead of tearing us down. The character of thought which we think or put out affects our business favorably or unfavorably. It influences others for or against us. It is an element felt pleasantly or unpleasantly by others, inspiring them with confidence or distrust. The prevailing state of mind or character of thought shapes the body and features it makes us ugly or pleasing, attractive or repulsive to others. Our thought shapes our gestures, our mannerisms, our walk. The least movement of muscle has a mood of mind, a thought behind it. A mind always determined has always a determined walk. A mind always weak, shifting, vacillating and uncertain makes a shuffling shambling uncertain gait the spirit of determination braces every nerve and sinew the thought element of determination fills every muscle look at the discontented gloomy melancholy and ill-tempered men or women who manifest in their faces the operation of the silent force which is their unpleasant thought cutting, carving, and shaping them to their present expression. Such people are never in good health, for that force acts on them as poison and creates some form of disease. A persistent thought of determination on some purpose, especially if such purpose be of benefit to others as well as ourselves, will fill every nerve with strength. 
It is a wise selfishness that works to benefit others along with ourselves. In spirit and in actual element, we are all united. We are forces which act and react on each other for good or ill. Through what ignorantly we call empty space, there are unseen nerves extending from man to man, from being to being. Every form of life is in this sense connected together. We are all members of one body. An evil thought or act is a pulsation of pain, thrilling through myriads of organizations. The kindly thought and act have the same effect for pleasure. It is then a law of nature and of science that we cannot do a real good for another without doing one also to ourselves. To grieve at any loss, be it a friend or property, weakens mind and body. It is no help to the friend grieved for. It is rather an injury, for our sad thought must reach its object, even if passed to another condition of existence, and is a source of pain to that person. An hour of grumbling, fret, or fear, whether spoken or silent, uses up so much element or force in making us less endurable to others, and perhaps making for us enemies, directly or indirectly. It injures our business. Sour looks and words drive away good customers. Grumbling or hating is a use of actual element to belabor our minds. The force which we may so expend could be put to our pleasure and profit even as the force we might use with a club to beat our own body can be employed to give us comfort and recreation. To be able then to throw off or forget a thought or force which is injuring us is a most important means of gaining strength of body and clearness of mind. Strength of body and clearness of mind bring success in all undertakings. They bring also strength of spirit and the forces of our spirits act on others whose bodies are thousands of miles distant for our advantages or disadvantage. The reason is that there is a force belonging to all of us, separate and apart from that of the body. It is ever in action and ever acting on others. It must be in operation at each moment, whether the body be asleep or awake, ignorantly, unconsciously, and hence unwisely used it plunges us into mires of misery and error. Intelligently and wisely used, it will bring us every conceivable good. That force is our thought. Every thought of ours is of vital importance to health and true success. And so-called success, as the world terms it, is not real. A fortune gained at the cost of health is not a real success. Every mind trains itself, generally unconsciously, to its peculiar character or quality of thought. Whatever that training is, it cannot be immediately changed. We may have trained our minds unconsciously to nourish evil or troubled thought. We may never have realized that brooding over disappointment, living in a grief, dreading a loss, fretting for fear, this or that might not succeed as we wish was building up a destructive force which was bled away our strength, created disease, unfitted us for business, and caused us loss of money and possibly loss of friends. To learn to forget is as necessary and useful as to learn to remember. We think of many things every day which it would be more profitable not to think of at all. The ability to forget is the ability to drive away the unseen force or thought which is injuring us, and to change it for a force or order of thought which can benefit us. Demand imperiously and persistently any quality of character in which you may be lacking, and you will attract increase of such quality. Demand more patience or decision, more judgment or courage, more hopefulness or exactness, and you will increase in such qualities. These qualities are real elements. They belong to the subtler and as yet unrecognized chemistry of nature. 
The discouraged, hopeless, and whining man has unconsciously demanded discouragement and hopelessness. So he gets it. This is his unconscious mental training for evil. Mind is magnetic because it attracts to itself whatever thought it fixes itself upon or that to which it opens it itself. Give space to fear and you will fear more and more. Cease to resist its tendency. Make no effort to forget it and you open the door and invite fear in. You then demand fear. Set your mind on the thought of courage. See yourself in mind or imagination as courageous and you will become more stout of heart. You demand courage. There is no limit in unseen nature to the supply of these spiritual qualities. In the words, ask and ye shall receive, the Christ implied that any mind could, through demanding, draw to itself all that it needed of any quality. Demand wisely and we draw to us the best. Every second of wise demand brings an increase of power. Such increase is never lost to us. This is an effort for lasting gain that we can use at any time. What all of us want is more power to work results and build up our fortunes, power to make things about us more comfortable to ourselves and our friends. We cannot feed others if we have no energy to keep starvation from ourselves. The power to do this is a different thing from the power to hold in memory other people's opinions or a collection of so-called facts gathered from books, which time often proved to be fictions. Every success in any grade of life has been accomplished through spiritual power, through unseen force flowing from one mind working on other minds far and near and as real as the force in your arm which lifts a stone. A man may be illiterate, yet he may send from his mind a force affecting and influencing many others far and near in a way to benefit his fortunes. While the scholarly man drudges with his brain on a pittance, the illiterate man's is then a greater spiritual power. Intellect is not a bag to hold facts. Intellect is power to work results. Writing books is but a fragment of the work of intellect. The greatest philosophers have planned first and acted afterwards, as did Columbus, Napoleon, Fulton, Morse, Edison, and others who have moved the world besides telling the world how it should be moved. Your plan, purpose, or design, whether relating to a business or an invention, is a real construction of unseen thought element. Such thought structure is also a magnet. It commences to draw aiding forces to it as soon as made. Persist in holding to your plan or purpose, and these forces come nearer and nearer. They become stronger and stronger and will bring more and more favorable results. Abandon your purpose and you stop the further approach of these forces, destroying also so much of unseen attracting power as you have already built up. Success in any business depends on the application of this law. Persistent resolve on any purpose is a real attractive force or element drawing constantly more and more aids for carrying out that resolve. When your body is in the state called sleep, these forces are still active. They are then working on other minds. If your last thought before sleep is that of worry, anxiety, of hatred for anyone, it will work for you only ill results. If it is hopeful, cheerful, confident, and at peace with all men, it is then the stronger force and will work for you good results. If the sun goes down on your anger, that wrathful thought will act on others while you sleep and bring only injury in return. Is it not a necessity then to cultivate the power of forgetting what we wish so that the current, so that the current which attracts the ill while our body rests shall be changed to the current which attracts the good alone? Today thousands on thousands never think of controlling the character of their thought 
They allow their minds to drift. They never say of a thought that is troubling them, I won't think of it. Unconsciously then, they demand what works them ill. And their bodies are made sick by the kind of thought on which they allow their minds to fasten. When you realize the injury done you through any kind of troubled thought, you will then commence to acquire the power of casting it aside. When in mind you commence to resist such injurious thought, you are constantly gaining more and more power for resistance. Resist the devil, said the Christ, and he will flee from you. There are no devils save the ill-used forces of the mind, but these are the most powerful to afflict and torture us. An ugly or melancholy mood of mind is a devil. It can make us sick, lose us friends, and lose us money. Money means the enjoyment of necessities and comforts. Without these, we cannot do or be our best. The sin involved in love of money is to love money better than the things needful which money can bring. To bring to us the greatest success in any business, to make the greatest advance in any art, to further any cause, it is absolutely necessary that at certain daily intervals we should forget all about that business, art, or cause. By so doing, we rest our minds and gather fresh force for renewed effort. To be ever revolving the same plan, study, or speculation, what we shall or shall not do is to waste such force on a brain treadmill. We are in thought saying to ourselves the same thing over and over again. We are building of this actual unseen element of this thought, the same construction over and over again. One is a useless duplicate of the other. If we are always inclined to think or converse on one particular subject, if we will never forget it, if we will start it at all times and in all places, if we will not in thought and speech fall into the prevailing tone of the conversation about us, if we do not try to get up an interest in what is being talked of by others, if we determine only to converse on what interests us or not converse at all, we are in danger of becoming cranks or monomaniacs. The crank draws his reputation on himself. He is one who, having forced one idea and one alone on himself, has resolved, perhaps unconsciously, to voice the same idea on everybody else. He will not forget at periods his pet theory or purpose and adapt himself to the height of others. For this reason, he loses the power to forget, to throw from his mind the one absorbing thought. He drifts more and more into that one idea. He surrounds himself with its peculiar atmosphere or element, and it becomes no less real than any other which we can see or handle. Others near him feel the influence of this single idea and feel it disagreeably because the thought of one person is felt by others near him through a sense yet unnamed. In the exercise of this sense lies the secret of your favorable or unfavorable impressions of people at first sight. You are in thought as it flows from you always, sending into the air an element which affects others for or against you according to its quality, and in proportion to the acuteness of their sense which feels thought. You are influenced by the thought of others in the same way, be they far or near. Hence, we are talking to others when our tongues are still. We are making ourselves hated or loved while we sit alone in the privacy of our chambers. A crank often becomes a martyr, or thinks himself one. There is no absolute necessity for martyrdom in any cause, save the necessity of ignorance. There never was any absolute necessity save for the same reason. Martyrdom implies always a lack of judgment and tact in the presentation of any principle new to the world. Analyze martyrdom and you will find in the martyr a determination to force on people some idea in an offensive and antagonistic form. People of great ability, through dwelling on one idea, have at last been captured by it. The antagonism which they drew from others, they drew because they held it first in their mind. I come not to bring peace, said the Christ, but a sword. The time has now come in the world's history for the sword to be sheathed. 
Many good people unconsciously use swords in advising what they deem better things. There is the sword in thought of the scolding reformer, the sword of dislike for others because they won't heed what you say, and the sword of prejudice because others won't adopt your peculiar habits. Every discordant thought against others is a sword and calls out from others a sword in return. The thought which you thus put forth is the thought that you receive back, and it is therefore after the same kind. The coming empire of peace is to be built by reconciling differences, making friends of enemies, telling people of the good that is in them rather than the bad, discouraging gossip and evil speaking by the introduction of subjects more pleasant and profitable, and proving through one's life that there are laws not generally recognized which will give health, happiness, and fortune. Without injustice or injury to others, its advocate will meet the sick with the smile of true friendship. For the most diseased people are always the greatest sinners. The most repulsive man or woman, the creature full of deceit, treachery, and venom, needs your pity and help of all the most. For that man or woman, through generating evil thought, is generating pain and disease for himself or for herself. You are thinking of a person unpleasantly from whom you have received some slight or insult, an injury or injustice. Such thought remains with you hour after hour, perhaps day after day. You become at last tired of it, yet cannot throw it off. It annoys, worries, frets, sickens you. You cannot prevent yourself from going round on this same tiresome, troublesome track of thought. It wears out your spirit, and whatever wears the spirit wears also the body. This is because you have drawn on yourself the other person's opposing and hostile thought. He is thinking of you as you are of him. He is sending you a wave of hostile thought. You are both giving and receiving the blows of unseen elements. You may keep up this silent war of unseen force for weeks, and if so, both are injured. This contest of opposing wills and forces is going on all about us. The air is full of it. The struggle to forget enemies or to throw out to them only friendly thought is then as much an act of self-protection as to put up your hands and ward off a physical blow. The persistent thought of friendliness turns aside thought of ill will and renders it harmless. The injunction of Christ to do good to your enemies is founded on a natural law. It is saying that the thought or element of good will carries the greater power and will always turn aside and prevent injury coming from the thought of ill will. Demand forgetfulness when you can only think of a person or of anything with the pain that comes of grief, anger, or any other cause. Demand is a state of mind which sets in motion forces to bring you the result needed. Demand is the scientific basis of prayer. Do not supplicate. Demand persistently your share of force out of the elements about you, by which you can rule your mind to any desired mood. There are no limits to the strength which may be gained through the cultivation of our thought power. It can keep from us all pain arising from grief, from loss of fortune, loss of friends, and disagreeable situations in life. Such power is the very element of attitude of mind most favorable to the gain of fortune and friends. The stronger mind throws off the burdensome, wearying, Fretting thought forgets it and interests itself in something else. The weaker mind dwells in the fretting, worrying thought and is enslaved thereby. When you fear a misfortune, which may never happen, your body becomes weak. Your energy is paralyzed, but you can, through constantly demanding it, dig out of yourself a power which will throw off any fear or troublesome state of mind. Such power is the high road to success. Demand it, and it will increase more and more, until at last you will know no fear. A fearless man or woman can accomplish 
wonders. That no individual may have gained the full height of this power is no proof that it cannot be really gained. Newer and more wonderful things are ever happening in the world. Some decades ago, and he who should assert that a human voice could be heard between New York and Philadelphia would have been called a lunatic. Now the wonder of the telephone is an everyday affair. The powers, still unrecognized of our thought, will make the telephone of trivial importance. Men and women, through cultivation and use of this power, are to do wonders which fiction dares not or has not put before the world. Now this brings up several different topics in relation to reality creation, and I thought that this essay by Prentice Mulford is a great start. How do we forget? When should we forget? It is important to understand here. We are in a different environment than the hundred or so odd years ago that this was written. And we're forced in a very unusual situation. We're constantly being given images and videos of people. I don't care what side of the political debate you're on. They are designed to create this sort of repulsiveness and anger. So you have people watching TV and reading their Facebook or Instagram or Twitter and becoming angry for whatever predisposed notions they have. This causes sickness and they're sending out the same thought current and attracting that thought current back to them. This is an incredible realization to understand. Even if your anger is justified, you are giving energy to it. I really believe Prentice Mulford was the beginning author in explaining the pendulum. There are pendulums that we see all the time on a variety of different topics. Everything from global warming to health care to immigration, all of them become pendulums. Corporations, the NBA, the NFL, all of them become pendulums and you start sending certain negative thoughts, you take away your energy. The real question here is when to forget and how to forget. One of the things that people may say to this is, oh, you're just spiritually bypassing by ignoring things. That is true. Spiritual bypassing is occurring when you're not forgetting. You're pushing it down into your subconscious mind. You are ignoring things that are a part of your own dark shadows. And shadow work is really about forgetting by bringing up stuff that you still have in your memory that you haven't dealt with. That's what happens with shadow work. You have things that are a part of your existence that are a part of you that you have not forgotten and they are still there and they're still attracting the thought currents and you're not aware of it. That's why spiritual bypassing is dangerous and shadow work is important. But also there's a point made in this that is very important to understand and that is if you think about one thing all the time, yes, you can create your reality, but you can get into what he calls a mental treadmill where you're just always thinking of that thought. And what happens is if you're doing it in purposes of trying to create something, you're taking some of the energy away from it. If you plant a seed, you're not going to dig up the seed and look to see if it's growing yet. But oftentimes that's what happens. People think about the same thing all the time and they don't allow it to come into fruition. There's a sort of vacuum that occurs. So that then the question is, hey, if I'm forgetting about something evil, am I doing the same thing? And that is what emotions you're attaching to it and what your intention is. When he says demand at this, it's the same as intention. Demand the reality that you want. Demand that you ignore and forget the things that you don't want. Your intention will guide your reality creation. It's very easy to fall into the trap. Some people physically become addicted to these feelings of fear and worry and they create neuronic connections in their brain and chemical baths in their body that become addicting in many different ways. You can control this. You have control over your thoughts. Understand that we are all connected. As he explains, imagine that we are all connected, that there are invisible lines connecting all of us. 
and your thoughts are influencing yourself and others and you're opening yourself to thoughts all the time and so you want to be in a wholesome positive place that you are thinking the proper thoughts and this understanding of positive and negative thought is something that Prentice Mulford talks about more and we will deal with this as well but an hour of grumbling of fret or fear whether spoken silently or uses up element or force in making us less endurable to others and perhaps making enemies of others directly or indirectly it injures our businesses and then affects as he explains our physical bodies we have these sour looks and grumbling or hating countenances the way we walk it affects our entire environment if you check out the last episode all the objects around you as you listen to me right now are infused with your thought forces so when you continually bring up the same thoughts over and over and if they are negative then you are just bathing the area around you in these negative thoughts so the first thing i would say is try to analyze if you're getting repetitive thoughts if things are being repetitively coming up make those the first thing to really focus on i have discussed in other episodes the difficulty in controlling your thoughts and quo the channeled entity that i have talked about in other episodes mentions that it's not about what you should be thinking because that can always be a difficult thing you now have an understanding once you start to think about something that you can demand that you forget it and several of my meditations i have designed as programming to help you control these thought patterns so i would definitely check those out my meditation on balance will be helpful but when you think about one thing all the time you create excess potential for that thing and then the opposition to it the opposing energy sort of comes up and that can dislodge the reality that you're trying to create i just love how prentice mulford writes about this stuff it's incredibly helpful to consider and understand and so if you can simply forget and change the way you think use this as a guide in understanding that you are in this element of thought force all around you and your thoughts go out and come back and you are opening yourself to channels and currents of thought and when you dwell on these things you open yourself to the same or more of an increase and so understanding this concept is incredibly important because you can then begin to forget and place your attention on the things that you want to do and understand that you can't overdo it and there's always a balance in nature and if you overthink something too much you're going to create an imbalance so focus on what you want create the reality that you want and be aware of this law of balance forget the bad stuff when you have frets or fears come up forget them please put in the comments your techniques to forget properly and what things we shouldn't be forgetting there's an open discussion on how we do this but there is an art to forgetting and the word art is important there's millions of artists in the world and everybody's trying different things art means that this is a technique that you develop over time and there's no specific way to do it right everybody has their own art there is an art to forgetting what is your artistic method in doing this please share it i'd love to know i can only tell you that some things are harder for me to forget than others and i communicate with my subconscious mind with my higher self with my guardian i try to identify thoughts that are working against me and try to be aware of these rules and laws so that i can stop those in curious thought currents coming to me and sending out the positive thought currents that i want to have and the world i want to create so this is an ongoing thing it's an art so i want to know what you do hypnosis helps meditation helps what you place your attention on helps but there's a lot more to it it is an art so let's just forget for right now all the division that we have in this world so many people hate each other for the color of their skin or their political beliefs or where they're from why can't we just forget about that 
Why can't we forget about all the stuff that we've been trained or educated on that works against us? The secret for us to come together in this world is to forget. Can you imagine for one day if we forgot all the BS that we have learned that has divided us? Then we can start opening ourselves up in the vacuum of thought to the idea of unity. Forget about all that stuff. Whatever you think that brings up a hateful, angry thought in your body, let's forget it. All that stuff that is causing any level of division within your family, within your mind, within anybody else in your community, forget it. For one day, let's come together. We are all one. Everybody around you is one person. We are all one mind. And forget about all those lies and false truths that bring fears and anger. And let's remember the truth that you are God. And we are all gods on this earth learning an incredible lesson of unconditional love. And by forgetting all the misinformation that we've been given, we can move toward a greater understanding of unconditional love. And that is what you can do. Thank you for joining me today. I'm sending out a thought current of love to you, hoping that you have a magnificent day. I love you so much. I'm so honored to share this time with you every day. You don't know how much joy it brings me. All episodes of The Reality Revolution can be found at therealityrevolution.com. And welcome to The Reality Revolution.